So today I thought it would be nice to explore parts from suttas that talk about Kalyana Mitata, which means admirable or spiritual friendship. And there are quite a lot of suttas that discuss this, which shows how important it is to have friends uh, like the suttas describe. <clears throat> I will start with uh, one that might be the most famous. It's uh, called Half the Holy Life. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One. Having approached, he paid homage to the Blessed One, sat down to one side and said to him, Venerable Sir, this is half of the Holy Life. That is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. Not so, Ananda, not so. This is the entire holy life, Ananda. That is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. When a bhikkhu has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, it is to be expected that they will develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path. By the following method to Ananda, it may be understood how the entire holy life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. By relying upon me as a good friend, Ananda, beings subject to birth are freed from birth. Beings subject to aging are freed from aging. Beings subject to death are freed from death. Beings subject to sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and despair are freed from sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and despair. By this method, Ananda, it may be understood how the entire holy life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. So this sutta is an especially important one because the Buddha explains that admirable friendship is crucial to progress on the path. It's very hard to do all this on your own without any additional support encouragement and teaching. In the Vagali Sutta, the Buddha said, one who sees the Dhamma sees me. One who sees me sees the Dhamma. For in seeing the Dhamma, Vagali, one sees me. And in seeing me, one sees the Dhamma. In other words, even almost 2,600 years later, we can still rely upon the Buddha as a good friend, simply by practicing, reading, or listening, and understanding the suttas. So we use the Dhamma itself as a friend on the path. And the Buddha was not only talking about monastic life. In the Digajanu Sutta, the Buddha said, uh, someone said to the Buddha, Bante, we are lay people enjoying sensual pleasures, living at home in a house full of children. We use sandalwood from Kasi. We wear garlands, scents and unguents. We receive gold and silver. Let the Blessed One teach us the Dhamma in a way that will lead to our welfare and happiness in this present life and in future lives. And the Buddha answered, and what is good friendship? Here in whatever village or town a member of a clan lives, one associates with householders or their children, whether young but of mature virtue or old and of mature, mature virtue who are accomplished in faith, 
meaning they are themselves already at least a stream enterer and have no doubt left about the way leading to Nibbana. Virtuous behavior, generosity and wisdom. One converses with them and engages in discussions with them. In so far as they are accomplished in faith, one emulates them with respect to their accomplishment in faith. In so far as they are accomplished in virtuous behavior, one emulates them with respect to their accomplishment in virtuous behavior. In so far as they are accomplished in generosity, one emulates them with respect to their accomplishment in generosity. In so far as they are accomplished in wisdom, one emulates them with respect to their accomplishment in wisdom. This is called good friendship. So friendship in the suttas is not comparable with the concept of friendship as we understand it nowadays in our lives. It is not about doing fun things together or telling each other what is happening in your life. A friend in the Dhamma takes refuge in the triple gem. So in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. And they keep the precepts and they are generous and wise. In this sutta, you can see that generosity is very important. When you have a friend that keeps the precepts and is generous, and we de develop this too, you will at the very least have good rebirths as uh, a result of that friendship, whether in, it is in the next rebirth or a subsequent one. So suppose one would not occupy themselves with the Dhamma for whatever reason, a friend like this still would be very, very valuable. The Ita Vutaka uh, says, because in regard to external factors, I do not perceive another single factor so helpful as good friendship for a bhikkhu who is a learner, who has not attained perfection, but lives aspiring for the supreme security from bondage. Bhikkhus, a bhikkhu who has a good friend, abandons what is unwholesome and develops what is wholesome. When a bhikkhu has good friends and is reverential and respectful, doing what, what his friends advise, clearly comprehending and mindful, they may progressively attain the destruction of all feathers. So we are getting a pretty good picture of what an admirable or spiritual friendship is. But the Buddha also warns against bad friendship. I'm going to read a few very short verses from the Dhammapada as translated by Gil Fronsdal. Like someone pointing to treasure is the wise person who sees your faults and points them out. Associate with such a sage, good will come, come of it, not bad, if you associate with one such as this. Let one such as this advise you instruct you and restrain you from rude behavior. Such a person is pleasing to good people, but displeasing to the bad. Do not associate with evil friends. Do not associate with the lowest of people. Associate with virtuous friends. Associate with the best of people. So a friend like this will not hesitate to warn you or even restrain you when you are on the verge of doing something that would cause harm to yourself or others. One who keeps company with fools will grieve for a long, long time. Living with fools is painful, as is living with foes. 
Living with the wise is delightful, like relatives gathering together. Therefore, you should follow a good, intelligent person who is wise, insightful, learned, committed to virtue, dutiful and noble, as the moon follows the path of the stars. If you find an intelligent companion, a fellow traveler, a sage of good conduct, you should travel together, delighted and mindful, overcoming all dangers. If you do not find an intelligent companion, a fellow traveler of good conduct and wise, travel alone, like a king renouncing a conquered kingdom, like the elephant Matanga in the forest. There is no companionship with a fool. It is better to go alone. Travel alone, at ease, doing no evil, like the elephant Matanga in the forest. Happiness is having friends when need arises. In the sutta that is called easy to correct, Sariputta says, one has good friends and speaks in praise of good friendship. One encourages others who do not have good friends to find good friends. And at the proper time, genuinely and truthfully, one speaks praise of those who have good friends. And the Buddha agrees with what Sariputta is saying. Then there is a small verse in the Theragata. And the Theragata is, um, um, it contains verses from the earliest Arahant monks. And one monk is saying here, I'm blind, my eyes are destroyed. I've stumbled on a wilderness track. Even if I must crawl, I'll go on, but not with an evil companion. And in Majjhima Nikaya 1110, the shorter discourse on a full moon night, it talks about the difference between the companionship of the bad person and the companionship of the good person. The bad person chooses as friends and companions those who are without faith, whose conduct is marked by an absence of shame and moral dread, who have no knowledge of spiritual teachings, who are lazy and unmindful, and who are devoid of wisdom. Because of choosing such bad friends as his advisors, the bad person plans and acts for his own harm, for the harm of others and the harm of both. And he meets with sorrow and misery. So every sutta that I came across explained that admirable friendship is all about the Dhamma. A good friend is someone who will not only keep you on the path, but will also help you to progress. They will prevent or point out to you when you are on the verge of breaking a precept, and they will encourage you to let go of bad friendships, which tend to pull you down with them. Bad friendships will cause you harm and others as well. A friend, uh, as is stated in the suttas, is someone who preferably has more wisdom than you have, or is even an arahant. Wisdom meaning someone who has already attained a stage of nibbana, and who understands dependent origination, the Four Noble Truths, and the Eightfold Path to an advanced degree. 
And there are suttas in which the Buddha tells us that when one has a good friend, it is also to be expected that one will develop and cultivate the seven factors of awakening. In other words, a friend like this will not only help you to develop the Eightfold Path and develop generosity and keeping the precepts, but they will also aid you with the meditation because it's only in the jhanas that these seven factors are present. Admirable friends are meant as an example for you to keep going and to speak and act as they do, no matter, no matter whether you are a monastic or a lay person. So this was very short, but I think you get the point about um, what it is to have a spiritual friend in the Dhamma, someone who, who can help you and assist you and is just there to talk with and to discuss the Dhamma on whatever level is suitable for where you are on the path. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed our grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisitions of all kinds of happiness. May being inhabiting space and earth, Devas and Nagas almighty power share this merit of our. May the long protect the Buddha dispensation. Sadi, sadi, sadi. Thank you, everyone. Thank See you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you, thank you, Sue. Thank you, everyone. See thank you, you next Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. See you again next week. Bye. Thank you.